Hey guys, it's Mrs. Groff here, and Evelyn is my helper. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about analogous colors, and I've got my little color wheel here. So in previous years, we've learned about primary colors and then what you get when you mix them, the secondaries. We've learned about warm and cool colors and also complementary colors, which if you recall are across each other, opposite on the color wheel. Well, analogous colors basically mean colors that are related. They're basically next door neighbors. So any colors that are three or four side by side um, would be considered analogous or related. And the reason this is important is because they are um, they blend well together. So artists use them to create blends that make highlights and some darker shaded areas. So let's take a look at this paper plate uh, which has a really pretty watercolor pumpkin. And um, you can see, of course, we think of a pumpkin as orange if you had to pick one color. But it also has some lighter values to show where the light is reflecting. And the artist has used yellow. And then the darker shaded parts is really dark orange, red, even some brown. So it's not just one color. So the analogous colors can help make your thing look more realistic depending on what you're, um, what you're drawing and coloring. So um, for our example, we're using pumpkins. We're still in, in the fall mood here. Um, but you have the choice to draw whatever you want to draw. And you're going to choose any three or more analogous colors. Okay, so we're going for realistic here. So we've chosen orange. And then for the lighter areas on our pumpkin, yellow, and for the darker parts, red, because they are neighbors on the color wheel. Yep. Okay. Evelyn's going to be using some chalk pastels. I'm using oil pastels. You can also do this with paint or crayons or colored pencils or even markers. So literally any, any colored supplies you have at home will be fine. Okay. So we've already done our base layer of orange. And now we're going to start, let's get our, our lighter. I used mine and I just blended it with my fingers as you can see. Mm -hmm. It's very messy. So yeah, chalk pastels are easy for blending. So I'm going to imagine that my light source is coming from above, such as the sun or the moon. And I'm going to use my lighter analogous color, yellow in this case, to go right over top of the orange layer that I've already done. And Oil pastels and chalk pastels blend real nicely. And you can decide how far down you want to go. How far you want. Maybe like a third down. Yeah, that looks really pretty. Um, and with chalk pastels, if you blend too much with your finger, you end up just pulling it off and more sticks to your finger. So it's just kind of a balance of a little bit of blending. You can use a Q-tip as well um, if you're at home and you have one. All right, I'm going to jump to my darker which would be red, and I'm going to shade the bottom. Take your time. And this is creating that shaded part where my light is not reaching the pumpkin as much, so the value looks a little bit darker. Okay, now I'm going to go back and do another layer of orange in the middle because, um, unlike Evelyn, I have so, a lot of white spaces. It's so very dark when it comes up. Yeah, yeah, kind of at the bottom. Now on this one, I also brought it up the side but this is so much larger. I thought that would be kind of hard to do on these little printout, pumpkin printouts. Don't be afraid to get messy if you use these. <laughs> and it's getting very messy. Yeah, you definitely don't want to blow when you get little um, chalk dust. You just want to kind of shake it into a trash can if the dust is piling up. Okay, and once you do a few layers, you can decide if you need to go back and brighten up anything. Sometimes I like feel like my yellow is hard to see. That's looking kind of pretty. Good. Yeah, and then just really gently blend it, I would say, with your finger just a little bit. And as kind of a finishing touch, oh, I don't know where my white got to. You can borrow mine. Um, I don't oh, think wait. chalk will go very yeah. well. Yeah, that's all right. I've got another one back here. So a little finishing touch, you can take white. Um, and just add a little highlight. And that would be reflections. And we can see an example of that um, a little bit right there, where there's some the really light. Yeah. Right yeah. So let's see, Ev, how, how'd you do? Here we go. 
Yeah, that looks pretty. You're still working. Okay. Uh, and I also did some examples of unusual colors to show you that um, you don't have to pick traditional colors. It doesn't have to be, if you're doing a pumpkin, it doesn't have to be orange. So this one I did um, green and then for the darker blue and then the lighter analogous color is this um, yellowish green here. When you finish, you can just use the green or whatever to like finish off the thing. The stem? Stem. Yeah, so whatever color like you want. crayon or something and not chalk because... To be a little bit neater. Yeah. And then here I used watercolor paints. Um, so the main pumpkin is blue, and then the lighter part was green, and the darker is purple. purple. So there you go. So you guys are choosing whatever subject you want. It could be something fall themed, or it could be um, something completely different. It's bonus if it's something that you can actually have in front of you to look at, so you can see what the you know how the light actually affects it. And uh, you are choosing any three or four analogous colors to um, try to shade realistically your object. Have fun. Mm -hmm.